Hi everyone, today I just want to play. It's something I haven't done for a while on my channel and so I really want to have fun and go with it and just experiment and we might come up or I might <laughs> create something um, quite striking or it might not work and this is exactly what art is about. So in front of me I have the sketchbook which actually I'm quite determined to finish because I stopped using it um, as I was working in other sketchbooks, predominantly the MD Cotton Notebook. And um, yeah, so this one is the Stillman and Byrne Alpha series. It's, it's a nice um, sketchbook, I really like it. At one point I even thought I might try the bigger uh, scale or the bigger format of it, but yeah. So basically the paper here is not the thickest paper but it's fantastic for small amount of watercolor and I also like the whiteness of this paper so it's not off-white it's not blue white like a cool tone white or a you know warm tone white it's perfectly in the middle and that's what I really like about whiteness of the paper because it makes all the colors pop so I want to play with um, one of my stamp sets and and this is again fantastic if you want to create a bit of a fashion illustration which um, you don't need to start with uh, fr from scratch but the the base of it is right here and then you can just build it and then create different styles um, all together so just to give you a few examples I wonder if I have anything here no um, in other sketchbooks at the minute I have like a million of sketchbooks. So if you're new to this channel and you are not aware of what's going on, here is the different styles of uh, these girls that you can create. So the clear stamp set is called FOTD. By the way, there are only a few left. At the time of filming, I think there are four left. So yeah, I, I personally absolutely love this one. It's uh, my favorite in terms of face um, building stamp sets which I have purchased before from other artists. Um, I quite like this one because I feel like it's more fashion like but again you know each to their own everyone has a different style so just to kind of let you see what you can create again different styles. So there is a more watercolor option here and again <clears throat> I think that's it. Oh no, there are a few more. So this lady here, this one, this one. And there is a lot more in my other journals. But yeah, just to give you a quick example. So um, basically what we're going to do is I'm going to start. This is a new set which I always keep um unopened so I can show you what it looks like but I have a few stamp sets that I opened and I'm working with so I'm going to use that. In the back here I have a little envelope which I put um, little masks in so this is for masking technique you just uh, stamp it on a piece of paper cut it out and then you can use it if you if you want to place if you want to stamp, stamp an image on top of the face, but kind of make it look like it's behind, that's the way to do it. So I found that keeping a little envelope with these little bits and pieces is very, very helpful. Okay, so I'm just going to get the packaging out of the way. Now, so today I had, um, I had this idea where I want to create quite a striking um, and, and really artistic style using the Caran d'Ache Technolo set. So I have done a review for these and I've done like a swatching um, little session. So I'll link it here in the card for you so you can have a look. Basically it's got three colors, red, green, blue, and then you have the four graphites which um, which are just the regular graphite, just the different hardness of it. So B, 3B and 6B. All of these are graphite and all of these are water soluble. So that's what Technalo stands for, for water soluble graphite. Fantastic quality, a little bit pricey, um, but 
I kind of feel like it's worth it. The, the quality is really fantastic. So what I want to create is this sort of monochromatic um, look working with the graphite for shadowing. So instead of the color here for the skin tone, I will go quite dark and I will use a variety of these. And then just to sprinkle a little bit of color, maybe something around her hair, like a little accessory, or maybe her just her lips. I haven't decided, but for some options, I have Naphthamide Maroon, which is a Daniel Smith watercolor. And then it's a beautiful, similar to this kind of dark um, wine, burgundy type of a color. And then I have this set of Tombows, which is candy colors. So they're quite striking. I wouldn't use all of them. I'm kind of thinking maybe a mix of these three would look very good with this color. So I might do that, I might not do that. Again, these are water soluble markers, which is fantastic for creating a bit of uh, watercolor look. But I have to be um, working in a very considerate way because graphites, if I apply them first and I use um, the Tombows on top, it will make the tip dirty, which I don't want to do. Um, so I have to keep in mind how I work. Okay, so I will begin by, um, so I zoomed out a little bit, I will stamp out the image and then once I go into detail, I will try to bring you closer again and zoom in. So, as always, I'm just going to start with building the face and from here onwards, I'll just speed it up a little bit because there is nothing too complicated about it, but you can just see how I'm working. All right, so the voiceover is back and the reason is that actually this video was 50 minutes long and I didn't want to put up a 50 minute video up, so I really had to speed it up. So I'll just talk you through what I'm doing here. I um, basically I'm building a face, which is what that um, FOTD face of the day clear stamp set was designed for. Uh, I think I might have man uh, mentioned that there are still a few left on my Etsy shop, Alona Creates. And here I'm just showing you if you're new to this channel or actually if you already have seen me create different looks, this is a totally different look that you can create. It's very artsy. Um, and so the base always starts the same. You build a face, you pick uh, the face shape, then the eyes, the lips, the brows, and now I kind of was thinking and considering what to or how to approach this because I knew I wanted to have the graphite um, be the focal point in this illustration. So to begin with I decided to line out uh, the certain face features and give her a little bit of a neck. Of course, choker had to be added. I just kind of love that. It's sort of like signature style uh, for me, for my cute little dolls. Um, okay, so this is going to be a very fashion orientated, kind of like a magazine, fashion magazine type of a illustration. So very striking, but very beautiful in my opinion. And so here I just put a, um, an example of a different illustration that I did um, uh, a while ago. And what I wanted to just look at was where the shadows fall. I mean, I can sort of, you know, see it myself, but because I was going to work or because I will be working with the graphite pencils, um, it's, it becomes a little bit different to working with watercolor. So here you can see I started by using the lightest one, which is the B, and it's the regular non-colored one. And I'm also um, adding some cheeks and kind of just naturally thinking where I would put the shadows or where I would want a dimension. Um, because I didn't want it to be flat, keeping in mind I'm just going to use um, graphites, albeit in different colors uh, or shades or thicknesses, um, hardnesses. 
so here we go at this point she'll start to look like a like a man uh, or with a goatee <laughs> but I promise you it will uh, it will become a little bit more clear and this is where uh, what I mean when I say it is a little bit challenging to work with graphite because it's sort of all is gray and then you have to think about where to add the lighter gray or where to press harder where to create darker grays um, which is harder than if you mix colors and create shadows with different colors so here it is starting to resemble a face shape it has a bit of roundness to it but the way I um, decided to work here is in layers so as you can see I'm drying this first layer and then I will have to go back and build it up a couple of times so at this point it's alright um, it no longer is looking like a man with a goatee but it uh, still needed depth for me for my liking and so I'm just highlighting the um, darkness where I wanted it so underneath the nose above the cupid's bow underneath the lip um, and again at the sides of the face and particularly the forehead as well as a little bit down the neck as well and so here you can see I'm building it up and the 3B or the actually the 6B pencil uh, in this set is super intense you can get it to look really black just completely black um, if you wanted to do that you just need to build it up in a couple of layers uh, but here I was trying to maintain some of the highlights of the shape uh, of the old and the shapes of the face so at this point I left it at that I tried it up again and then I decided to add some of the gold um, uni signo what is it called it's right next to me signo uni no uni ball signo pen and this is the gold color and the tip is broad so i did some uh, doodling in her hair to suggest some maybe ethnical jewelry on the on the head which i thought was quite beautiful this this piece is quite um i, I took the inspiration from tribal um you know art tribal jewelry then i decided to grab the naphtamide maroon by daniel smith and squeeze it out a little bit into my watercolor set right there by the way if you're interested this is the lip and cheek handmade watercolors by moi and they're still available at aliona creates etsy and so this um, color the naphtamine maroon is just superbly beautiful it's a very dark kind of wine color which works really beautiful with the color palette of this illustration normally in my illustrations i don't really do color in the eyes i tend to kind of give them gray um eye color which is an eye color obviously but i sort of stay away from colors um, or any other colors but here i really wanted to give her turquoisey blue colors again which is a perfect uh, combo with the gold and the uh, wine burgundy watercolor so uh, at that point I um, went back to the fine tech and I'm using this um, gold watercolor here which is the middle color I forgot what it's called let me just pull it out if I can yes it's right here so the color is called gold pearl and it's really uh, a beautiful gold and it just intensifies it it's really opaque and it's just really um, it's like metallic basically paint so after I've highlighted her um, eye a kind of like the Cleopatra type of a eye uh, makeup but with gold instead of black and then I decided that I had to deepen the eye color again and what I've done there is I went with the graphite to darken the uh, like the 
depth of, of the color. And then on top, I went again with a bit of that turquoise, which means that I'm having depth as well as the color uh, on top. And um, so now I decided to add some doodling into her hair. At the beginning, I wasn't sure what I wanted to create. I thought I'll go for a floral crown, but as she ended up being so fashion, artistic, kind of amazing um, and tribal, I decided to give her a crown out of these twigs and leaves. And it's very easy to do. You just um, doodle some, basically, leaves that come into your mind. Here I decided to get three colors from the uh, candy, what's it called, candy colors of the Tombow set. I will try to link it down below. These are all of the three turquoise kind of um, colors. Two of them are quite translucent. I'm also mixing the three colors together to get a watercolor effect and a bit of dimension as well and it just really looks pretty. Tombow markers I've said again and again they're really fun to work with especially if you like watercolor um, and you want to try something different something new they are really fun they have loads of different colors to pick from and um, yeah so uh, also great for when you are on the go because you just need a water brush with you and that is it Okay, so as I've been doing that, I also noticed that I want to soften out these pencil marks a little bit more here. As they are a bit too... scratchy. Right, so at this point I'm going to take a very, very thin doodle pen because I'm not going to add any water on top. This is the Muji 025. And I'm just going to draw a line in the middle of the leaf. Very simple doodle. Make the line curve a little rather than just a straight one. That will look a bit more organic, I find. Also, it will give a shape to the leaf as well. So this is quite fresh. It's quite different to... Um, the styles I did before and I really enjoyed it. I think that's what I want you to um, or I want to encourage you doing is pick up a few art supplies and just don't do don't don't pick up like a pile of them you know the less you pick up the more likely you are to create something you really really will enjoy. So I'm just doodling a few extra uh, lines here and there on the leaves. And you don't need to do it across all of them. Just maybe do one, one or a few of them and then just leave them. Okay, so that is it for today and I hope you enjoyed this beauty. She's gorgeous. I would love to frame her. She's like an Amazonian queen. Alright, so thanks for watching and see you soon.